and Neville's Flying Circus will position themselves on to one for take off. Yeah. They will turn the bot back, as I said, to that golden age. were also used throughout the RAF as elementary training aircraft. Luxurious by standards at the time was the Tuesday. Tuesday had a tail wheel instead of a tail skid. Seat in both the front and the rear cockpits would be adjusted for height and distance from the rudder bevels. It actually had effective brakes. And a variable incidence tailplane as well, so quite an improvement on what had been before. The collections example is now the world's sole survivor. It needs to have a vice, doesn't it, to keep uh, student pilots on their toes. I was quite interested in a contemporary view of the tutor and what did a, a new trainee think about it. And uh, in the book on Robert Stanford Tuck, who became a World War II ace, uh, he says, I was shocked. The whole thing looked so fragile, a light framework of wooden steel covered with thin, tightly stretched fabric and held together by bits of wire. The wings were trembling in the gentle wind which breathed across the airfield. But in the air, when the, uh, the airflow goes over the airframe, everything tightens up and he found the tutor a very enjoyable aircraft to fly. Silhouetted against the, uh, the little patch of cloud up above us at the moment, the de Havilland DH-82 Tiger Moth going through some gentle arrows. Tiger Moth, very much an aircraft of legend. About 8,600 were produced and about 800 are still complete with approximately 600 in or near airworthy condition. And it was the Tiger Moth that actually replaced the Tutor. It's not everybody's favourite aircraft, it has peculiarities of its own. There are, as a matter of interest, there are two Tiger